YouTube, it's Chris. Welcome back to the channel. I have some exciting content for you guys here. I've been spending a bit of time working on this, so sorry, sorry I haven't uploaded in a little while. An updated NT Lite guide. So for you guys that have clicked on the video, you're not quite sure like what, what is NT Lite. Basically, it's a program which can mainstream doing a lot of things with a customized Windows. It's really convenient. There are other programs out there and there are other methods to customize a Windows install, but this is by far probably one of the, the best ones to do that. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you a full breakdown on an updated NT Lite guide and customized Windows 10 and Windows 11 install that I have made that I will be sharing at a later date in a later video showing you guys the ins and outs of the install um, and things like that. I think you guys will be really happy with the results but long story short with NT Lite we can grab a we can grab a Windows ISO we can fully modify it before we install it we can remove Defender store all the UWP apps um, and we can fast track optimizations we can do lots of stuff so it's very very convenient so I've been reluctant to do this video for a while guys and I'll explain why so about a year ago as you can see with let's have a bit of a look at my videos about a year ago I started getting my hands on latency um, uh, tools like the one on the monitor and a third party one which was much better for testing and um, you know I was really disappointed to find out that customized windows that you'll make through NT Lite or even just stripping your windows down doesn't give you higher frames or higher 1% so 0.1s or lower uh, throughput latency it just doesn't it doesn't do anything um, if anything most of the time if you want to main a windows like this you're going to end up with broken features that you don't think that you'll need now but you'll need later so if any of you guys want to get involved or install one of these i'd highly recommend doing a doing a dual boot so just have like a normal windows on the side and then maybe have the stripped down version for just gaming and stuff but i just want to really push this guys you're not going to get lower latency and you're not going to get higher frames with a customized windows install like this that's why i was kind of reluctant because after doing all those tests i did do the playlist as you guys know my most popular playlist and in this playlist i included all the things that actually matter and i left out all the things that didn't and a lot of the videos that either i wasn't happy with or just didn't agree with the methods anymore are all sort of in here so like i said i was reluctant to do this video but uh there is a big each part of the community and my following that have been really asking for an updated NT light guide and i get it guys as long as you're aware that you're not going to get higher frames a lower import lag um you know and it's more of a niche thing just for, for you guys that have been asking me cool no worries if you guys really want higher frames or lower input lag spend the time into getting a better ram kit uh, overclocking your ram kit you know lower timings faster speeds overclocking your cpu your graphics card generally getting better hardware like a monitor with low delay you know all the stuff or just everything that i have included that actually matters after doing my latency tests um, is obviously in here so like i said Oh, I don't want to carry on too much more, but um, I was really reluctant to do this video, but I get a niche part of the community really likes to strip down windows. So I spent the time to do an updated guide on 10 and 11, show you guys how to make it. And I think you'd be really happy with the end results because it's just really, really clean. Um, and literally 95% of everything is done for you. So like once this is installed, everything is done. Everything's stripped out. Everything is absolutely done. All you need to do is install your driver and do driver settings easy peasy like that's all you need to do uh, but anyway without further ado get on with it now what you guys are going to need to do is you're going to need to go to my mega nz and you're going to need to download the windows 10 or windows 11 nt light files they'll be in my mega drive they're not uploaded at the moment but they will be by the time of this video okay so whatever you want to go on and if you want to follow through with the video Guys, I'm sorry, but you will need to buy NT Lite if you want to use all the features. Because if you do follow this guide without with using the free version, you're not going to be able to strip everything out. So it is, is what it is. Now, just to let you guys know, I will be sharing these ISOs once they've been made on Mega NZ for you guys. And I'll be doing another video showing how to install them um, and how the ins and outs of them. So that's no problem at all. So for you guys that want to understand how it's made and how it's done and all the nerdy stuff and the nitty gritty ins and outs, sure, go ahead and follow this video. Um, but if you actually want to do it for yourself, you're going to have to at least buy a home license so you can um, take out absolutely everything.
Because like I said, if you, if you use the free version, you're not going to be able to take out everything and whatever. And the reason why, as you guys know, my whole YouTube and all my content is all about being about showing you guys how to do it for yourself. Um, some people might not be comfortable with just downloading an ISO straight from me. And I get it because, you know, there can always be keyloggers and customized ISOs and stuff like that. So a lot of people might actually just want to follow this video and this method and do it for themselves for peace of mind and assurance. Or if they just want to modify it differently for themselves. But... Just so you guys know, if you want to follow this video, you really, it's recommended to, to buy the, the home version of this software. But if you don't want to, cool, just go ahead and download the ISO that I'm going to make from this video and then you guys can download it and just use it. All good. So anyway, without further ado, we'll um, go ahead and just download NT-Lite. So go ahead and download that there and you'll have to buy a license and you have to enter in the license when you've opened up the program. We're going to go ahead and in this video, we're going to do Windows 10 and Windows 11. Let me show you guys how to um, so make these ISOs. So just go to the Windows 10 website, as you guys know, um, just press, uh, what is it, F12 to go to developer mode and click on mo the mobile. So we put it in mobile mode because Windows 10, we just want to download the bare ISO without the the pain in the ass with the media creation tool. So we'll just go ahead and we'll go ahead and download our, our customized uh, board. We'll just go ahead and download the, the normal ISO. So just go ahead and follow through the prompts here. Um, and then the 64 bit version, that's what we need. Uh, for Windows 11, we can actually just go straight to the site and select ISO, which is really convenient. So we'll go ahead and download that. I've already prepared them here, so we're ready to go. So first of all, let's start with uh, Windows 10. All right, so I'll just put these here. Start with Windows 10. So let's extract the NT Lite files for Windows 10. So just go ahead and extract those, All right? Because we'll start with Windows 10, right? And I'll just check if they've been put in a subfolder. They have, so I'm just going to do that. So they're just not in the subfolder. All right, so they're not in the subfolder. We're ready to go. So we've got the NT Lite files ready to go. And now we're actually going to need to extract um, the Windows 10 files as well. So if you guys don't have WinRAR 7-zip, just go ahead and grab 7-zip, okay? Just go ahead and download it and install it. It's pretty straightforward. And then we can right click on here and go, uh, there'll be a sub menu for you guys. If you've installed 7-zip, just look for 7-zip and then extract files and then click OK. That should extract it directly to the desktop. For us to modify and edit the um, the Windows install with Antilite, we, we're going to need to extract this completely. So yeah, as you can see here, we're ready to go there. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll open up Antilite now. So we've got our Windows install files here. And we've got our NT Lite files here ready to go. All right. So let's open up NT Lite. Okay. Pretty straightforward. And make sure you've entered your key. If you're following through this video, like I said, you, you need a license to be able to use all the features. So go ahead and open NT Lite. All right, we've got NT Lite open. So I'm just going to minimize the window just a little bit. All right. So what we need to do is we need to grab this ISO file that we've extracted, which is the latest Windows 10, 21H2. And we just need to simply drag that in here. All right, once we've dragged that in here, let's go ahead and remove all of the images that we're not going to need. So I've decided for these uh, videos, same with the fast tracked version that I've just recently done. Um, and the, the difference between the fast track version and this version, if you guys are asking basically is this version is much, much, much more stripped down. So you can't use the Windows store, no defender, um, nothing like that. It's a very, very bare stripped down, but we can go and get rid of um, all the things we're not going to need here. So we're actually not going to need um, Microsoft Windows PE. So we can go ahead and right click and delete that. We're not going to need everything in here apart from Windows 10 Pro. So we're just going to go ahead and remove all of these. Now, um, I've, I've mucked around with, with trying in some of these different versions. Usually the end version or the education version come with less bloat, but the end version comes without um, basically a media player. And the problem is um, there's a game called, I believe it's Grand Theft Auto 5. Um, if there's no Windows Media Player files in the Windows, you can't actually play that game. I believe it just bugs out. So we're just going to stick with Windows 10 Pro um, for, for this uh, guide, for this series. So we're just going to be like right clicking and just deleting everything in here apart from Windows 10 Pro. If any of you guys followed my fast track video method on how to make it, it's very, very similar to what we were doing uh, with the deployment and imaging tools environment. But the good thing about NT Lite is it's just an easier way. And it's much more fast tracked. It, it can do a, a lot of what that program can do plus more, which is really convenient. So yeah, we're just going to go through all of these and delete all of these except Windows 10 Pro.
Okay, so we're just deleting the last one here and that's all we're going to need. We're just going to need Windows 10 Pro and Microsoft Setup 64. So that's the, the boot WIM and that's the install WIM basically we're going to be editing. And they're the files that are in here um, in sources. Uh, we've got boot WIM and then we've got install WIM as well in here. So the install WIM, install WIM is actually the one that you actually like boot to to install. Um, the yeah, the boot one is the one that it actually boots to to install the install win, but I mean, that doesn't matter too much. Anyway, also what I want to say is you'll see something that says deployed images. That's your current Windows install. Uh, you don't muck around with that because you end up breaking your install. Like you can strip things out this way, but I really wouldn't recommend it because you're stripping out a live image that is already like live and deployed on your PC. I just don't, don't just don't do that. Anyway, so what we do is now we need to load Windows 10 Pro. So just, you can know, right click and go load or you can double click on it. So we're just going to double click on it here. Um, and now it's going to like load all those files in a temporary directory where we can edit and modify it uh, completely. Okay, once it's said it's loaded, we're pretty much good to go. So I'll walk you guys through the different tabs and features. But what we're going to be doing is loading a preset into here and just applying it so it's all done for you. But there's a couple of little extra steps, right? So we can go to like updates here and we can integrate updates if we want to straight from like a, a website. Um, so say there is an update for this Windows build or we want to integrate a certain update we can or we can add like templates like Net Framework 3.5 which we will be doing. We can actually add drivers in here so if you need a driver like for your current install or just you want to add all generic network drivers in here for like all uh, PCs you could technically if you wanted to you just need the INF files and stuff like that and just drag them in here registry you can make a full registry like tweak file which I have done and added in here and it will apply most things there's a couple of things that I find that don't get applied and that will be applied later with a post install registry and I'll get into that a little bit later a couple of things like sounds customization performance option customization don't get applied until the image is actually like installed but I'll talk to you about that a little bit later components is where we can go in here and like fully strip things out so you need to be really careful in here I've got a preset ready to go for you guys but you can take out a lot of stuff as you can see a lot of apps and a lot of stuff like a lot of bloat that's within the windows and generally what's good about NT Lite is it will get rid of like the dependencies for those apps and it'll get rid of the drivers and all the files whereas if you just run a debloat script on like a normal install like a PowerShell debloat script it doesn't actually get rid of all the files properly all the drivers that come with it so it's kind of cool if you can't uncheck some things you need to kind of look on the right here and we say like locked by compatibility recommended things like that so you can go to compatibility and uncheck things but if you generally uncheck things more than likely it'll unlock things for you to remove but some of those things may be broken now like Dino from NT Light who made this software obviously has done his best to test a lot of this and got feedback from the community but there are times where there will be dependencies on things or certain programs that people just don't know about you could take things out or strip things out that you wouldn't think that are related with a program that you might use and are and the program bugs out it's just how it is so that's why one of the things I was really reluctant to make this video as well because you do break things um but you do have a have dual boot definitely like have to just a normal windows install on the side as well but yeah like if yeah we can we can uncheck a lot of stuff in here but I've got a preset that's already done but that just sh shows you guys how to uncheck now if you guys haven't paid for the license and you doesn't matter like how many things you've unchecked in camp compatibility and you can't uncheck a certain uh, component either it's explicitly not supported to remove like this one or uh, if it's blue it means you haven't paid for a license to be able to remove them so just to let you know now schedule tasks you can go ahead and play around with the default windows schedule task i don't recommend playing around with this one i've uh, played around quite a little bit with things in nt light and you just end up breaking things like windows updates and stuff like that but you can if you really wanted to you can remove a bunch of uh, default schedule tasks that come installed with windows uh, features uh, you can go ahead and uncheck a bunch of stuff in here um, and this features is very similar well it is the same tab that you see in here basically windows features on and off um, this one here so we can like pre-apply a bunch of this stuff so right now my, my just vanilla windows install you can see most of the default stuff's checked but we can kind of like pre-apply those settings already which is cool settings there's a lot of cool stuff in here right a lot of cool stuff but i've got a preset ready to go for you guys uh services here's one where um 
like services, like all your services, so your Windows services for certain apps and files and programs and things like that. And like, you know, the built-in Windows things. Now, when you remove components, if there are services tied to that and explicitly tied to that, it's actually like, say you remove a component, like, I don't know, like a um, certain component. If you go back to services, you might actually see some of the services are actually removed. And that's because we're stripping out that component. So or remove the service that's related with that component, which is pretty damn cool. Um, in this guide, I'm also going to be uh, including a services disable script just because, because the type of people that... Even though like disabling services and getting them bare down to a minimum, which like this install, these installs will probably get our services down to like 30 or something like that. Windows processes down to about 30, background processes down to about like eight or something like that. It doesn't help like throughput latency or FPS, but like I said, this video is for the niche people. So yeah, I'm just walking you guys through. Um, extra services, these are actually kind of drivers or well, these are drivers built into Windows. So once again, I wouldn't, recommend playing around with these either like, don't play around with the services you can play around with the services like after your install and disable them after but if we do it before more than likely you could actually break the windows install process or using certain features so my best bet is like having um which we will be including in this video uh a services disable script post install like a disable and enable script so you know you can like roll back or whatever you know, disable the service is great, but then, oh shit, I need to update my Windows or our program isn't working, then you can run the enable script. But yeah, and anyway, the extra services are just drivers and you'll find some of these will actually get removed too when you remove certain components, which is cool. Um, and then the unattended. So unattended is basically like the post setup, um, you know, file that goes within the Windows install that will can bypass a bunch of stuff. So a little file will be made in here. And basically when you install Windows, you can not have to go through the prompts. It just makes it a lot more fast track. So I did include um, one of those in the, the fast track videos where when you install your Windows, you don't have to like opt in and out of Cortana and all those, ever, all those other things that literally you just install and it takes you straight to the desktop. So all of those settings will be included. And post setup is really, really useful and really cool. So when you see the Windows spinning logo and the Windows has just been installed just before you see the desktop, this actually runs and you can run scripts or registry files um, or anything. So let's just like show you a template like power config hibernate off. So it's an example like disabling hibernate. hibernate. You can do anything with this. You, uh, in the past, I've used it for installing drivers like NVIDIA driver. Um, it's limitless what you can do with this, but what I've actually found with, with this is half the time it bugs out. Sometimes when you, like if you apply like more than five things, a lot of time Windows 10 bugs out and some installs it'll apply them all, other installs it won't apply them all. And also another bug I found, which I was talking before about like the registry components, um, things like sounds. So I, I like to have this Windows fully done where like no sounds, play Windows. That's one of the things that doesn't get applied until post setup. So even if you put it, in this post setup, it still won't work like a registry file to run. It it will load it, but there's things that can't get applied because you need to see the desktop to apply them first. It's just kind of weird. That's just how it works. So I found a little work around that and I'll show you guys how I found that work around later. But that's why I, I just don't bother with the post setup anymore. I've actually made a post setup script which runs differently. Um, and you guys will see how that works later anyway. But anyway, uh, it's already been 20 minutes into the video almost. Let's show you guys what to actually do and continue on. So you guys have got the gist of using NT Lite. So let's just go ahead and use it with my preset. Okay. And also like disclaimer, um, there's a lot more that you could do with NT Lite that I'm not doing today. Um, and you can make the, the image a lot like lighter and a lot smaller. Um, but there's a, it's like a rabbit hole, right? You can go down the rabbit hole with NT Lite and, and waste a lot of time and come out in the end with still a broken image. So I've spent a lot of time on this tool um, to the point where I'm not willing to spend more time to make the, the image lighter or strip out anymore because it's gonna, I know it's going to end up breaking. Some of these things need to be tested long term. So I'm just not willing to put that time and effort into it. I'm sorry, guys, but I think you'll be really happy with the end result here. And if you guys want to go further, by all means, use my preset and, and go to town, remove it anymore. But um, I wanted to leave you guys with at least a somewhat functioning Windows for, for gaming. You know what I mean? So I didn't go too crazy. Um, anyway, so let's open the in, uh, Windows 10 NT Lite files. And I've got a, like, a little bit of list you can follow through. So the XML. So we go ahead and open the XML. This XML file is basically like settings to be applied, pre-applied on all of these, all the settings that I've done. 
and I'm including that for you guys so you can just go ahead and like load it and, and like as you can see this is just gonna say uh, for what NT like to do of all the settings that I want you guys to run for making these this customized windows so we just drag XML in here okay once you've dragged in here, you can just press, go ahead and you can rename it if you like, but we don't need to do that. We just go ahead and press um, OK. And once you've done that, you can right click and go load, um, overwrite. Um, I mean, you only need to do overwrite if like you've loaded another one before, but I'm just going to double click on it and it will load it for us. Okay. So if you get a bunch of like uh, error messages that pop up, don't worry because these are in a different path and we're going to be following through everything else anyway, like all the different steps. So don't worry about that because I had this um, in a different named folder, as you can see. So yeah, just don't worry about that. Just go ahead and press OK. Um, if you see any others pop up, don't, don't worry about it. Just press OK. All right. And so our next step is like explore mount directory. So basically, like I said, we've loaded those Windows 10 uh, files from the install WIM into a temporary directory. So if you go ahead and go explore mount directory, like right click on and go explore mount directory. And just it just basically gives you a warning message. It's like when you go ahead and apply, just make sure you don't have the folder open. That's all it's just saying. So don't worry about it, just press okay. We just have to make sure we close out this folder when we're done. And as you can see, it's basically put like the windows install, like the windows, the directory files in like a temporary location. Okay, and that's what it basically loaded up. So in saying that, I've got a couple of steps that we need to apply. Um, so I'll need you guys to run the take ownership file because what I like to do is I like to remove all of the default Windows images and the background images because I just don't like them. I like a bit of a clean look with this uh, Windows install. So just go ahead and run the take ownership.reg. Okay, and then when you right click something, you can actually take ownership of it. So I actually want you guys to take ownership of the web folder and the user account pictures folder. So go ahead and open the Windows folder and then scroll down and go find web. And in web, you'll see all the like um, wallpaper pictures. Okay, I've like redone these just as black because I wanted a really clean look for the windows, but you guys can change them later if you really want to, it doesn't matter. But anyway, just go ahead and right click and take, um, ownership of these because for me to transfer across my ones and I'll just show you guys my ones uh, there's like a permissions issue um, so we just need to go ahead and do that all right and explain all these other files in a sec so yeah go ahead and right click and take ownership of web and that you see a little script that'll just do it all for us automatically to save time and then also I want you guys to go to a directory so go up to the, the ex explorer here and just go, or you can go, go back, just simply just go back here. And we need to type like um, the forward slash or backwards slash. And we need to go to program data. All right. Because you can't see the program data folder here. It's hidden unless you guys have files in hidden folders shown. So just go program data. And then we need to go to Microsoft and then user account pictures. Okay. We need to take ownership of this folder. So just go back take ownership of um, user account pictures, right? So we've done that because my, the Windows user account pictures that I have added here are just like black, just for a clean look for the windows basically, if that makes sense. So once you've done that, great, let's go all the way back to where we were. Now, what I want us to do is, I will, we won't worry about loading the hive and I'll explain that in a little bit. But for now, what I want us to do is I want us to add these files. So go into the add these files location and we're going to copy, so right click and copy and paste them in here. So it's gonna add all the files we need for the optimization and stuff like that, that'll be pre-applied. And also it's gonna, um, you know, uh, now it's replacing all those files like the, um, the wallpaper and the user account pictures that are just gonna be a clean black. So just go ahead and click replace there. So once you've gone ahead and done that, we're done with this stage. So you can go, go ahead and close out the window, all right? Right, and I wanna to explain to you guys before we go any further on what files we're adding and why, okay? So these are the files that are getting added to like, basically when you do the install, like the, the C Windows folder, they're gonna get added here, um, if that makes sense, right? And so one is the NVIDIA control panel. So it gets a little complicated with the latest NVIDIA drivers that are all DCH. So what that means is the NVIDIA control panel is actually uh, downloaded from the store. And if you remove the store, which we're going to be doing, we're kind of screwed because we can't use the NVIDIA control panel. So I've got a method that will be adding the um, NVIDIA control panel without the store through PowerShell. And then 
because we don't have the install installed, there's like permission issues with opening it up. So that's why this script is going to be here. So if you're on AMD, you'd simply be able to delete it after you've installed it, but just leave it there because you guys are going to need it. Um, and then there's, I've also made a post install um, script. Um, and the post install script is all going to be related with all the files that are in here. And I'll show you how it worked. This post install script is actually going to delete itself. And it's going to be run as soon as you see the desktop. So those registry files get applied and also so everything gets applied. Because like I said, using the post setup bugged out half the time, which got really annoying. So let's go through the files that are in here. So we've got the user account picture files. And then also these are files that I added because for some reason the lock screen would be a, 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 a default image. So they kind of get replaced. Well, they get added, but it'll be black because if you don't, the login screen will be like a weird image the default windows image that's why they were added there okay now we'll go into the windows folder here so basically i've added DirectX installer just because half the time um uh, you know it's going to need to be installed and i need i just wanted that to be automated so you'll see that automated um there's something called lgpo okay and the reason why I've added everything in here and put an underscore is because um, in the Windows folder, I want you guys to know once it's been installed, what um, files are like added by third party, kind of similar to what you see here. This is the fast track um, version of Windows that we did before. And that's why I put an underscore. So it's all at the top. So, you know, they're the, the, the pre-added files. So I've got the power plan, which will be like automated in the script. I've got C++, which will be automated in the script. And the reason why I added C++, I added DirectX just because. But the reason why I added C++ is for the timer resolution service to be installed, it needs a C, it needs a C++ package dependency. So that's why that's added. LGPO is basically like a, a, a program that can use... Um, group policy editor and actually permanently disable updates. Um, and then I'm going to have a toggle script on and off. So, you know, um, if I get a task scheduler here, basically it can like force um, like updates disabled. So ideally I wanted um, updates to work with this ISO and they will work. But the problem is with the Windows 10 ISO now, the latest Windows 10s, when you make a customized ISO, when you update Windows, it actually reinstalls Defender, which is really annoying and never used to do that. With Windows 11, it's not going to do that, but that's why I wanted it, the updates to be disabled by default when you first install the Windows, because some people might want to have a choice um, whether they want Defender on there or not. Because if you're going to this length of making a customized ISO, you want bare bones nothing anyway. Um, like that's the whole point of doing all of this. So, but yeah, and but like some people will want to enable the updates because they might need face it or ESCA later. So they'll be able to run it fine now, but maybe in six months time, they won't if they want to use this ISO. So there's like going to be a scripts folder in here. That's the original post installs just kept in here just because, but you wouldn't rerun it later after you've installed Windows, but just like services disable and enable script and updates disable and enable script. And those services disable and updates disable are going to be ran um, like uh, on post install, basically with this post install script. I know it all sounds a little bit complicated, but it all works well together. And there's a reason why I've put them in these folders. Um, and the power run, basically, um, you guys will see the script later when I show it, but basically forces those services to be disabled and whatnot. Okay, and the registry is going to be the same registry that we put in um, like here as well. But like I said, remember when I said like there's some things that don't get applied like applied like performance options and sound options unless the registry is ran as soon as you see the desktop. That's why it was all done in this way. And also just because post setup like bugs out half the time. So anyway, all the files are there like ready to go. Basically what happens is we're going to edit the registry in here. Right, and I had um, a fair bit of help from a couple of the boys on Twitch. So just shout out to you guys. I'll, I'll put your names down in the description below. It helped me with this one because that's one thing that I was stuck with. I'm like, all right, so there's a couple of registry keys that get ran, but they don't get applied because um, you need to see the desktop before you apply on them. But I didn't want you guys having the hassle of clicking on anything. I wanted the Windows install to be installed and then just everything applied. You guys don't have to do anything other than install your driver and do your driver settings. That's it. I didn't want you guys having to click on anything or do on, do anything. So that's why we've done it in this way. So basically this post install, like I said, it's the same as this one. This is just like the backup for it. But this one, basically what it's going to do is we're going to edit the registry file within using the hive of this ISO to run this file 
once on boot when you see the desktop, okay? And I'll show you how that looks. And this file is going to apply all the optimizations that NT Lite can't apply or would apply through post setup. But like I said, half the time when you run too many things, it breaks. Long story short, this will look very, very similar to my fast track video, maybe some of my other videos, but I spent a bit of time on cleaning this up and make it easier. So basically we're gonna install the Bitsum performance power plan, um, delete the other ones. We're gonna disable Hibernate. It's gonna install C++ package and there's a decent timeout here so it does get installed. And these are all gonna be installed silently. So you guys won't even see this. This is all be, this, guys, this will all be done before you see the desktop, which is just super. It's gonna, because <clears throat> the time resolution service is dependent on a C++, that's why I did C++ first, and time resolution gets service gets installed, and then DirectX gets installed, and there's a decent timeout for that. Then the registry files get applied, like the registry optimizations, yeah? And then there was um, one or two things that like NTLAC couldn't apply, like disabling network discovery. Like some of you guys might want to turn the back, that back on. That's fine, whatever. But I mean, the whole point of this Windows install is just a bare bones gaming only ISO. So yeah, the, well, I've turned them off, right? Okay, and then that's gonna, um, you know, basically use LGPO with the config for LGPO to disable updates just to save time. So that's gonna load that. Um, now this is going to install the NVIDIA control panel so we can use the latest DCH drivers, right? That's going to be really, really handy. But like I said, there was an issue with opening it. That's all taken care of with, this will be the only thing that'll, that you guys will see in C drive basically. It'll just be left there because for some reason when you right click and go NVIDIA control panel, it would bug out. Something to do with permission issues when you don't have the store or the dependencies for the store installed. So it's the only workaround because if we didn't do this, you guys would have to use really old non-DCH drivers and newer games are coming out. You're gonna have a hard time with old drivers, believe me. So we wanna be able to use the latest drivers on a stripped Windows build um, and still edit and use the NVIDIA control panel. Now, technically speaking, you could just use an NVIDIA Profile Inspector, but it's a pain in the ass. You guys just wanted to use the normal NVIDIA control panel. So that was the only workaround I could find for that. And basically what this does is, weirdly enough, is the fix to open NVIDIA control panel because it wouldn't open and, it's, and, it, and it won't open, guys, on the desktop. Like when you right click and it won't open in here, but it'll open when you open this. It just takes permission, um, like it takes ownership of like that folder after it's been installed and it's going to do it every time and grant permissions and then it'll open the NVIDIA control panel. Um, that's the only way to open it. It still won't work when you right click and click it on here or you do it from the, the, the start menu, but you just have to run that script and it'll open the NVIDIA control panel for you guys. All right. So anyway, where were we? Uh, back to the post install. Um, I'm pretty sure I've just about covered everything here. Um, yeah, so it runs the services disabled and because a bunch of those registry keys um, won't apply unless you run them as trusted installer, we're using Power Run to do that, which is a nice program. Um, and then it's going to restart the PC. So basically this will apply <clears throat> um, when you see the desktop and the PC will restart straight away after the install and boom, everything will actually be applied. Um, and that's the best way I could come across doing this without you guys having to do any optimizations after the install was done and just to save time. So to get this to actually run on kind of boot run once only, um, I'll show you guys how we've done that. So we need to load the hive. So it's going to get a little complicated, right? But just show you guys how this works. Okay. And I've, I have to like write everything down because it's hard to keep up, but basically long story short, we're going to use our registry. We're going to go to reg edit. We're going to use our registry to load this registry. So the registry location for everything is actually is in system 32 and then it is in um, config. So these are like the default registry. This is for our NT Lite build, right? We can go in here and we can edit like this one to get this, that script to apply on the startup once. Um, which will, surprisingly enough, it actually works and it applies it when it sees the desktop, whereas the post setup in NT Lite doesn't. So this is the best way that I've been able to find to do it. But anyway, in saying that, that's what we're doing. We're using our registry. We're going to load that registry location and change it. But yeah, it's called loading the hive. It's, it's kind of cool and it's kind of interesting that you can do this. But yeah, anyway, so I'm going to load this hive because this is our temporary... Windows install directory. 
So I'm going to load that hive, right? So I'm going to go file. We actually, to do this, we need to click on local machine. So we click on local machine, go file, load hive. So now we're loading registry from another windows here. Okay. And I've just got that address just to save time rather than me going through it. So I'm just going to paste it there. So these, this is like the, the, um, the files from our current install that we're modifying, right? Cause we want that script to apply on boot. Yeah. And then, um, we need to use the software one. So we use a software one and we'll open it and the key name needs to be like one. So, well, you can call it whatever you want, but I'm just calling it one because this directory has it at one. So you can call it whatever you want. You can call it like whatever, but I'm just going to call it one and then press okay. So now if we open this, we go on one, these are all the registry, um, uh, files that we can edit that are from that windows custom install that we're making, but we don't need to edit or do anything. We just need to, um, simply do it for this location here. So the run once location. So we're just going to paste that here and I'll just make sure that it is we're at run, run once H key local machine one. So that's the hive that we've loaded window, Microsoft windows current version run once. Cool. Great. So the run once will run this script once. So we need to create a script, um, a string value and I'm just going to call it script here. Yeah. So we'll right click here, go new string value, call it script. And then we need to basically put the data in for the script. So the script is basically going to be, I'll just double, double click on it, put in the value data. I'm going to paste that here. It's going to be CMD, uh, you know, forward slash uh, C start minimize. Basically it's going to run that post install script when we see the desktop and do it silently. Okay. Um, this is the only way that I could find to do it um, without having to get you guys to click on anything after it's been installed we want everything to be applied so just press ok and we're done here but before we close this out we really want to unload the hive so just scroll up and uncheck like um unminimize everything okay and just leave one checked i found sometimes if you go unload hive now so you have to be clicked on one go on live sometimes it might bug out so i like to close registry and then reopen it and then make sure we're clicked on one and go file unload hive because sometimes it comes with a little bug like an error message so i found that's the best way to do it so we're going to unload it press yes done so that we've unloaded the hive it's really important that you unload the hive before you close um out registry completely and forget about it it's really important that we unload the hive okay guys so that's done so technically speaking we've edited that um we go to explore mount directory we've edited the system 32 config software we've edited that for a new install so they're in the run once registry location, it's going to run that script for us when it sees the desktop. Um, and it's gonna do it once, which is really convenient. Um, and like, I don't know if I showed you guys, but that registry scripts, sorry, the post install script is actually gonna delete itself in C drive. So I've kind of sneakily hidden it here. So um, it'll, when it goes to restart, that's command to restart, it'll actually delete um, the post install in C drive. So there won't be any kind of left, anything left in the C drive. It'll just be the NVIDIA control panel one. Cause unfortunately, because of the NVIDIA control panel, like bug thing that I fixed for you guys. But anyway, so that's done. So let's move on with it. Um, cause this video has gone on long enough. I think you guys, uh, hopefully you guys understand what's, what's going on here. Um, and how everything's working. So we're done in explore mount directory and we've closed all the fo uh, folders. So we're good. Um, now let's go to updates. Okay. So I've got, I think a screenshot of here of the update. So I just load network framework 3.5. So just go to updates and this is already loaded, but just to show you guys what was done, we'll just delete those. I added net framework 3.5 cause some games and programs are dependent on them. Just wanted to add them to save you guys time drivers. I actually left blank. Um, when you guys install these, uh, ISOs, you may need to download a, a driver. Um, and include it in your USB or whatever you're gonna be using. I didn't want to add files, folders, and programs that weren't needed in this install method. I wanted to keep things really, really clean. I didn't wanna add all the drivers for all the network cards because I wanted to keep this clean. I have done that before in the past with my Auntie Light video. I didn't wanna do it this time. I just wanted to keep things clean. I didn't wanna pre-apply pre programs or anything like that. I just wanted to keep it clean. So I think you guys get the point. So with registry, um, this isn't showing here because when we originally loaded the XML, it was in a different location, but just go to the registry and drag that in here. Boom, that's gonna apply all the registry files that we need but like i said some of them don't get apply but our pre-install our post-install script is going to take care of that so 
yeah and a lot of these are simply just control panel and immersive control panel settings that are already taken care of for you it's pretty pretty nice it's a very very similar if not the same as the fast tracked windows i'm pretty sure it is pretty much i've edited it a little bit but it's basically very similar to the fast track um uh, video that i showed you guys but yeah um, we're doing this on a stripped install anyway so we go to components this is already taken care um, for you guys i've already removed everything that i'm comfortable to remove out uh, comfortable to remove uh, to still make the windows functional so search should still work like start menu things like that should still work you should still be able to update windows you use the immersive control panel and all the settings that are left in the immersive control panel blah 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 but if you guys want to go ahead and remove more, you're on your own. And I'm not guaranteeing you that everything in every single game or every single program is going to work with this customized ISO either. And I'll be making those disclaimers when I do the install videos, showing you guys how we're going to in install them, which is not going to be in this video. But yeah, it's all taken care of for you. I'm not comfortable to remove any more. You definitely can, but I mean, there's going to be a point of diminishing return where you're just going to end up with a broken image. So you kind of want to be careful with doing that. But basically, long story short, remove, removing all the bloat and at least most of the things that matter anyway. Schedule tasks, I just leave. Like I said, I play around with this before. I ended up being a complete nightmare. By the way, I've taken a photo of the components that are removed because it's the only way for me to sort of back it up apart from the XML. So I've just got photos here just as a safe backup measure so you can see what's uh, being removed. Like I said, schedule tasks, don't touch this because it's broken things before. Features, um, yeah, so I've basically unchecked most things um, and just I've kept legacy components for really old games. I've kept Net Framework 4.8 and I believe I've kept Paint WordPad, the English language, DirectX configuration database, stuff like that. You guys should still be fine adding your own language later, by the way. Um, I've tested that before and that was totally fine. So, um, yeah. So that's taken care of. You guys won't need to check or uncheck anything in here, but if you guys want to customize it, be my guest. Um, if you think you might need some of these, you as gamers won't, like literally 99% of my viewers won't need any of that. Anyway, settings here, here like I said, it gets really cool. Um, a lot of settings uh, that are pre-applied um, to save time. So just customization and stuff like that. Now my registry files pretty much take care of most of these, but there's a few extra that I can't do that NT Lite are doing, which is nice. Okay. So they're all taken care um, for you. You don't have to worry about that, but that I do have photos of the things that I've changed. Now, the things that I haven't mucked around with was event viewer channels and auto logger tra auto logging tracing. I've always had broken images playing around with these ones so i just leave those out just to let you guys know services like i said we don't touch these until post setup like post install the post install script disables the ones that we're not going to need um extra services i don't touch these a bunch of, some of these may be may be removed as you, you might find a couple like removed here and there like the grayed out ones i think are going to be removed um but yeah we i don't recommend touching this at all you can end up breaking things it's just not worth the hassle um uh, unattended this is already taken care for you guys and just to show you guys um how this was applied um it is in no i don't touch extra services unattended so basically i go to add a local account so add a local account um we're using built-in administrator because uac is annoying um auto login is this user no password the name of the pc is just going to be pc um, and then they're the settings that are done. Um, now, the reason why these settings are done the way that they are, you guys can obviously change time, uh, region, language later. That's fine, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> um, but we've added the generic Windows 10 product key. So, I mean, this isn't an actual key. It's just the generic Windows 10 Pro product key because if we didn't enter a key in here what would happen is um the windows install would say that it's an enterprise build and then when you go to enter your pro key in it doesn't work half the time and bugs out so we enter the generic key that they use in um id de it deployment which will tell the image okay it's pro and then when if you guys need to enter your key and it doesn't work uh, you need to re-enter it in it's going to work flawlessly because it already thinks it's a windows 10 pro that makes sense so anyway all of this stuff is basically like done so when we do the install um 
like we're not going to need to check uncheck cortana or uncheck privacy options or anything like that we don't have to go through any of that bs it's already done for us which is great anyway post setup like i said i don't bother playing around touching anymore and let's go to apply now this should already be checked and done for you guys um but yeah there's no need to save the image and trim additions because we've already trimmed it manually um we're gonna select esd this will take a while if you guys don't want it to take too long just select whim esd is high compression so it's going to make the file a lot smaller but if you need to re-edit it it's a pain in the ass because you have to convert it back to whim but we don't need to re-edit this image i generally don't recommend editing an image like a windows install too much just try to do it once and then that's it it gets a bit messy if you keep editing it and editing it and cutting it down i could degrade the files basically so yeah and we can select don't back up login preset because we don't really need it like i've already got the login presets here for you guys anyway so we don't really need that checked but yeah so um if you don't want it to take too long just select whim but if you want it to be like a smaller file size we click uh, select esd and i'm going to be selecting esd because um i'm uploading this on mega nz for you guys and i want it to be relatively like small size so i'm going to click process um, now it's going to come up with the Windows Defender detected and it's really recommended to turn off Windows Defender while making this image because Windows Defender can get funky with certain files and this technically is trying to edit certain files so and delete them out of the Windows install image so just press yes it'll open Windows Defender for you click on virus and threat protection manage settings turn all of this off just temporarily you can turn it back on when you've made the image through NT Light you can turn it back on later no worries just for now leave it off so NT Light can do its thing so go ahead and press yes and now we just have to simply wait. All right, guys, so that's done. Um, and we did that as ESD. Now, this is my 5950X. It only took six minutes and 39 seconds. Uh, for some of you guys that don't have as good of a CPU, this could take like 15 minutes or so. So just a heads up. If you do ESD, it's gonna take quite a while, but at least the file size is gonna be smaller. So we're all done here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and go to source and forget Okay, now I'm just going to delete these because we don't need these presets because we're going to start again with a Windows 11 one and then Windows 11 one we're going to just really kind of breeze through because I've already showed you guys how to sort of do this. I'm just going to close NT Light for now, let it clean itself up. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete these two. So you don't want to use this image now. We want to use the one that's kind of been created um, ideally. Uh, you probably could use this one, but just delete this one and then this one here i'm just going to rename this um so we know what it is i'll just call this like windows 10 nt light so that's a windows 10 nt light iso so we've got the files and we've got the iso so i'm going to upload those to the mega drive okay and we're not going to need these windows 10 install files now because we're only going to need the windows 11 install files because that's what we're going to be working on now and i'm not going to need this because we um extracted that and already used that so yeah so let's go ahead and we'll make the um uh, windows 11 install files so as you can see the windows 10 one that we just made it's all ready to go um all ready to go and it should be really flawless so i'll do that in a future video very very soon let's go ahead and make the windows 11 one now all right so let's make this quick because the video has already almost been an hour so we'll go ahead and open up uh nt or we'll go ahead and we'll extract the end we're gonna well, we're gonna need to extract so we'll extract the windows 11 files get them ready to go okay because like I said, we're going to need to extract them to edit them in, in T-Lite. So extract them. There are Windows 11 install files, just the normal Windows 11 install that's ready to go. I'm going to delete that because we don't need it. Uh, let's extract the Windows 11 NT Lite files, all the files that we're going to need to edit the image that I've got pre-applied ready to go. Um, it's very, very similar to the Windows 10. There's just a couple of different um, apps and features. Um, but it's very, very similar to the XML that I included in here. Like I said, there's just a couple of different things here and there. Um, I had a bit of a hard time with the Windows 11 one. Honestly, it took me quite a few days because um, I couldn't get the Explorer working on the start menu working. That was something really silly. I'll talk about that later, what ended up happening, um, <laughs> why it broke. But anyway, I got that sorted. I'm just going to drag that to that because I don't want them to be, I want them to be directly in the directory here. So that's what we need to see. So I'll go ahead and open that and leave that ready to go because we're going to need to use these files. Let's go ahead and open NT Lite. Okay. We should have just a clean window like this looking like this. Let's drag the Windows 11 install files in here like the default ones and we're going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to delete Windows PE and then I'm going to delete everything in here other than Windows 11 Pro.
Okay, we've deleted those other ones. All we should see is Windows 10 Pro and um, Microsoft Windows Setup. So let's go ahead and we'll load this. So just double click on this. All right, we've got the image loaded up. So let's just go ahead and we'll go to XML. We just drag the XML in here, but we won't bother loading it yet. Okay, uh, let's go back here. We'll go to Explore Mount Directory. We'll um, run the Take Ownership Reg. We don't need to run it again, but I'm just going to run it again anyway. Um, so what we need to do is we need to take ownership of the web and user account pictures. So let's go ahead and we'll explore the Mount Directory here. Okay, go to Windows, Web, Take Ownership. Now, some of these are actually a little bit different, believe it or not, because it is Windows 11. So I've obviously edited those fine. Go back to the main directory all the way back, and we need to go to backslash program data, and then go to Microsoft, and then user account pictures. We're going to do the same for user account pictures. We're going to take ownership of those. So we can replace them with just a clean black. So once we've done that, let's go ahead and we'll add these files. So we'll go copy, and then paste. And then it'll ask to replace those files that we've taken ownership of. Because if we didn't take ownership, we wouldn't be able to replace the files. We we'll just replace those done. And we should be done in this directory now. So we can close it out. Now let's take, um, figure out the hive. We'll get that done. So before we move on. So let's go ahead and we'll go to edit with notepad. All right. And let's go to this uh, registry location. So control C, I'm gonna to go to reg edit and we're gonna edit the Windows 11 install hive so it can run that um, post install script. So we'll click on HK local machine, file load hive, and then that location. And then we're going to be editing, if I remember software, press open. Okay, files in use. Yeah, sometimes you guys might see this and it gets a little bit annoying when that happens. So we'll just close it out and we'll do some other things. So I might just load this XML while we wait. I, this happened to me the other day. It was a little bit annoying. If you guys see this, don't worry about it. We're going to go through every step of the Windows 11 install. So let's try that again. I'll close everything out. Yeah, this happened to me once the other day when I was doing this and I was like, why did that happen? And then it didn't happen when I did it again. So let's try that again. Regedit, key local machine, file load hive. We want to load software from in here. And then now it's not bugging out. See what I mean? I'm just going to call it one. And then click on one. And you need this one. So this registry location. So I'm going to paste that in here. Yep, that is the correct location. HK local machine one, Microsoft Windows current version run once. Beautiful. All right, so what do we have to do now? We have to create a string value and we're going to name it script. So let's new string value. We'll name it script. And the data has to be this. So I'm just control C, control V, basically copy and paste. And that's what we need to see here. So now we need to unload the hive. All right, so I'll just close this window. All right, that looks good to go. I'm just gonna scroll up and just unminimize this. And like I said, sometimes I have registry bug out, so I'm gonna close registry, reopen registry, click on one and unload hive, and we should be okay. Beautiful, done, we can close that out. Now, um, what do we need to do? We're done in here. Now we've got updates, so let's go ahead and click on updates. Yeah, that's the thing that sort of bugged out. So just go ahead and add, Net framework 3.5 done drivers we're not adding those registry we are adding that so drivers we're not adding registry we are adding so just drag that to here done components all taken care of um, i've got photos for the windows 11 one as you can see here now these are a little bit different to windows 11 um, and it's all been taken care of for you guys so a couple of different apps different names things like that it's all taken care of you guys should be happy with this iso um, edit it to however you like it, but just disclaimer that you might break some certain things. Schedule tasks we don't touch. Okay, uh, features we do. Now, this is the one that I had the issue with, uh, with that I was telling you guys before, where I couldn't get File Explorer to work. There was something on features in demand, and I believe it was these drivers. If I unchecked some of these drivers, it would, or it was maybe Internet Explorer mode. It was probably Internet Explorer mode. I wasn't able to like click on the start menu or even open file explorer. It was completely bugged out. Um, when we went, went to install the image, it just wouldn't install. So that was a little bit annoying. 
Now you guys might have an issue with Notepad and I'll show you how to fix that because you guys might have that error message come out and I probably should show you guys how to add that. So even though this doesn't really work, the Notepad doesn't really work in this 11 install, so you're gonna have to use Notepad++, but I'll show you guys. So the default NT light location, if I remember correctly, um, it's in uh, updates and then that. So this wouldn't originally be here. So I'm just gonna delete that. All right, cool. So I'll show you guys what I was talking about, right? So if we check on Notepad now, it's gonna say, oh, we're missing like uh, a certain file, a package file to enable that. So just click on okay. And then it's gonna make that folder. So we just have to go to the original Windows image and we have to go to sources and then um, I believe it is, if I remember correctly, SYX, yeah. Just go ahead and like copy and paste these in here. And now you should be fine to check Notepad, all right? Now that these are in here. So close that out. Cause you guys might get that error message with the XML. That's why I'm showing you this. Now if we check Notepad, see there's no error message. Whereas we didn't add those files, it would keep coming up with the error message for Notepad. But yeah, this is all taken care of and done for you guys. So you guys shouldn't have to worry. Um, just be careful on checking those other drivers and those other things. If you do want to play around with it a little bit more, I'm pretty sure it was Internet Explorer mode that completely broke the image. Um, but anyway, uh, let's go to settings. Um, these are all taken care and done for you guys. A little bit different, a couple little different settings in Windows 11, um, of course, because it's a slightly different OS, but I've got photos in here of the things that we're changing as well. Um, if you guys want to start from scratch, it's just it's nice to have that. Um, go to services, like I, remember what I said, we don't touch those. Extra services, which is the drivers, we don't touch those. Unattended, uh, same thing has been done here. Basically we added a local account, select those two, named it PC without a password. I check copy to boot image and dual architecture because sometimes depending on the Windows install or the, the, the PC that you're installing, sometimes this wouldn't get applied. So we definitely had it copied to the boot image. Um, and as you guys know, that's taken care of to make it a lot easier when we do the install. We don't need to check prompts or anything like that. Post setup, like I said, we don't touch because we've got the post setup script that's been done through the Hive, which is the post install, which actually applies everything. Um, and that's done. And now let's apply the image. So there's another thing that I've also added to bypass TPM. Now in my fast track video, we just used the boot whim from Windows 10. For some reason, it's not working anymore, which is weird. So later on when we've made this image, um, I'm gonna show you guys, if you want to bypass TPM and install Windows 11 on like an older PC that doesn't have TPM, um, just be very well aware that like Valorant doesn't work though. You need to have secure boot on and TPM on for Valorant, the game Valorant to work. But there's an option that we can do. We can load the Hive um, and add these registry keys into the boot whim so we can bypass TPM because for some reason the boot whim from Windows 10 just doesn't work. But it must be an updated Windows thing. But anyway, um, we want it ESD. All the, the non-essential additions have already been removed. We can check that because you don't need that because I've already got the there's 11 NT light files. But if you guys had edited it differently, you'd probably want that unchecked so you can, because it'll actually add the XML into the, the ISO file. Um, so you can go back and reuse it if you wanted to. But anyway, let's go ahead and we'll process this. It should take about like six minutes for me. And then we've just got one more step to bypass TPM. So go ahead and, and yeah, it'll probably want us to turn off Defender again. Because every time, after a period of time, if you restart the PC, it gets turned back on. So I'm just going to turn it off. And we'll turn that back on later after we've done this image. So now we'll go ahead and press yes. I'll just close all the folders out just to be safe. And we'll press yes. And now we'll wait. All right, so we've done here. The image is all done. I'm just going to name this and I'm going to upload it to my uh, Mega NZ drive for you guys so you guys can use these. Um, so I'll name, let that clean up. I can delete these two. And then this one is going to be called Windows 11 NT Lite. So, so yeah, I hope you guys found the video useful. Sorry, it took a little while to get done, uh, but it should get you guys out of trouble. 
But yeah, so just, just a heads up guys, um, not everything's gonna work with these custom builds. So if you wanna make them, you need to go ahead and download the Windows 10 NT Lite files or Windows 11 NT Lite files if you guys just wanna install them. And I'm gonna be doing another video now um, on showing these installed, Windows 10 and Windows 11. If you just wanna install them and you want them already ready to go, they're ready to go for you, download these ones. Um, and if you want to make them yourself or edit them in any way, they're the files to do that. Um, my recommendation is sticking with 10. 11 is still quite buggy. Um, unfortunately, with Windows 10, when you update Windows 10, it re-adds Defender, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, so I yeah, know that's a bit of a bummer. Maybe avoid doing that unless you have to for ESCA or face it or something like that. Um, and also full disclaimer, like not all programs and games are going to work on these installs i believe 11 um, you might need notepad plus plus you guys are gonna need your own web browser you might need drivers to uh, you, you might need to install drivers like internet drivers you might not have internet not everything may work but like i said uh you guys asked for an updated video and here it is and i'm pretty happy with the results and um, but just a friendly reminder just remember guys um like doing this sort of a thing isn't going to boost your frames or lower your input lag you really kind of want to focus on peripherals or memory overclocking stuff like that just as an example which is kind of really interesting to me um the biggest optimization overall uh compared to anything as far as what when i've done all my latency tests is like memory memory overclocking faster speeds or lower timings and sadly it's such an underrated thing um and this video doesn't have many views so i just want to kind of push that out to you guys that the customized ISO isn't going to boost frames or lower input lag. I know I've said this like five times already, but I've made this updated NT Lite guide for you guys just because you guys have been asking. And I know a good part of the community just really enjoys the feeling of a complete fresh install with no bloat whatsoever and really minimal background tasks. Like bare bones minimum. I, I do get it. It is, it is a nice feeling. So guys, subscribe, like, share the video around. Um, go ahead and send me a donation because I've wasted a few weeks on, on doing an updated guide here. and it's, it's been a bit of a nightmare. I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in a while, but I'd appreciate donation to help uh, fund the Mega NZ because I have to pay these guys so you guys can uh, go ahead and download it because if I upload it on the Google Drive, it'll just take too long. And just generally for the time and effort, I'd appreciate it. Go check me out on Twitch. I'm regularly streaming and playing games on Twitch. Even just go for me like a, 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 a prime sub or something like that it give me a lot of support but guys enjoy the isos and i'll probably see you in the next videos where we go ahead and install these um any questions jump into the discord a bunch of guys will be able to help there or um just come into my stream ask questions or if you need any help with anything like that and i do offer an optimization service where it does focus sort of on the overclocking aspect and reinstalling windows if you guys ever want me to optimize your pc so you just come check me out on twitter if you need any of that Pardon me. Links are in the description. Guys, thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.